So in the world of generative AI, companies and researchers and academic facilities are attacking on two fronts. One is going to be the hardware side. How do we make better processing units, whether they're DPUs, GPUs, TPUs, what have you, and preserve as much energy being inputted into these things to run the computation as much as possible. There's also, you know, the high performance compute side running the AI workloads. That's what we know as the GPUs like NVIDIA and AMD. Then there's also the quantum computing side, which just really hasn't caught up. It is more efficient, but just because of the basics of how quantum computing works, the accuracy hasn't reached the level of usefulness for things like large language models. And one thing you should know is that about 98, 99% of the energy, the electricity being inputted into these accelerators comes out as heat. It's just wasted, which makes these data centers very power hungry, very hot. And the more powerful these GPUs are being made, like with the most recent NVIDIA Blackwells, the more you're going to need things like liquid cooling, which again, creates more energy and is against the more environmental conscious type of people or companies because a lot of the net carbon initiatives that are 2030 are just gone out the window. Now, the other side of it comes with how do we make the actual model more efficient? And with large language models, there's a lot of computations. Now, one of the resolutions that Mark Zuckerberg and team at Meta, you know, I just include Mark Zuckerberg because he's the big wig at the top, but it's all the brainiacs below working very hard on things like large concept models, language modeling in a sentence representation space. Now, I don't know how much people that are watching this understand how large language models work to begin with, but they're based on a tokenization computation level where the in 2017 attention is all you need was a paper that was released and it just changed the game in terms of how do we get more useful outputs in this is what it looks like. It's a transformer architecture. And I've shown this before, I showed it in a previous video most recently, but here's all the individual computations. So on a token level, they use it interchangeably that the computations are done either word or token, but you can see here in the word empowers is split in between two. So I prefer to use more token level computations. So the word output that is expected is data visualization empowers users too. But what's the next word? Well, the reason GPUs, again, are so important is the parallel computations. A CPU is serial. It's going to be one after another after another. But all of this, if you click into here, you'll see all of the different linear algebra, the matrix computations, calculations that have to be done in order to, and you can see it all span out here, which is why I love this visualization that I'll put a link in the description, to output with high probability that the sentence should be Data visualization empowers users to visualize. Down here, analyze. That would be more akin to what we expect from this, but for whatever reason, with the high probability, and you can change the creativity through the temperature uh, function here, and you can see what different things can be outputted. So that is large language models. But that's not how our brains work. Our brains work on concept and Meta is doing a lot of focus on how our brains work and how that translates. And in the fields of computational neuroscience, it's really interesting. We are learning a lot about the brain based on how we're understanding neural networks to work and vice versa. We are able to improve large language models of the neural networks underneath to get better models. And in this instant, this is what they're saying. LLMs have revolutionized the field of artificial intelligence and have emerged as the de facto tool for many tasks. The current established technology of LLMs is to process input and generate output at the token level. That's what I was talking about here. These are token outputs over here. And here's the probability of what word should come after too. Um, this, in, this is in sharp contrast to humans, this is what I was saying, who operate at multiple levels of abstraction, well beyond single words, to analyze information and to generate creative content. In this paper, we present you an attempt at an architecture which operates on an explicit, higher level semantic representation, which we name a concept. Concepts are language and modality agnostic, which is very important for the scalability of these things, and the improved efficiency and represent a higher level idea or action in a flow. Hence, we build a large concept model. 
In this study, as proof of feasibility, we assume that a concept co corresponds to a sentence and use an existing sentence embedding space SONAR, which SONAR stands for Sentence Level Multimodal and Language Agnostic Representations. I, I, I don't know how that equates to SONAR, but anyway, which supports up to 200 languages in both text and speech modalities. And the development of SONAR, none other than Meta. And the good part about Meta, open source, they do the research, they benefit from it, we benefit from it, and they just put it out there. And you can go into their GitHub, and this is the large concept model, model <coughs> excuse me, model with all of its information. But going back to the paper, what's the big difference? So we saw before here, we're going on a token base level with self-attention. They're looking at the context in relation to what next word should come out to give the next word that should be outputted or the token. But here you can see this example, the visual, visual excuse me, visualization of reasoning this is on the left, in an embedding space of concepts, task of summarization. So Tim wasn't very athletic. He thought that would change if he joined a sport. He tried out for several teams. He didn't make the cut of any of them. He decided to train on his own instead. So that would be sentence by sentence, token by token. But if we go to the concept level, we can see with greater efficiency that in what's also important to note is that every, again, token requires input of energy in order to do all the probability calculations in order to come out with the output here. So every single piece over here must be calculated in order to generate the output. With much greater efficiency, we can see because he was not very athletic, Tim could not join teams to improve output, so he decided to train on his own. We skipped one, two, three sentences and any number of tokens that had to be calculated to reach here because that's how our brains work. We don't think in steps. We can do quick calculations, come out and react, and sometimes not even think before we speak. Here, you can see it here, input. This is a very, like, right, fundamental architecture of a large concept model. Uh, very, very, very simplistic. Unless you know the architecture of a large language model, you don't really understand how the input of the concept encoder, which would just be a token encoder, would, well, it looks like this. And then there's a decoder right here. So underneath the hood of neural networks, uh, I like this. Is it this one? No, it's probably this one. Okay. So this is what neural networks look like when they're trained. All the tokens that are inputted in the data are embedded and come out to look like this in vector space. Again, a very simplistic of how words are associated concepts. Uh, context, everything else. And there's a whole bunch of things of what makes this complicated. There's cursive dimensionality when there's just too much information inputted and too much, too many relationships and you're having issues with accuracy. And that's another reason why perhaps concept, because it should reduce the number of tokens. Now, the one thing you should also notice is this is all in English on the concept level. It's not supposed to be it's supposed to be language agnostic which should also also reduce the training, which training requires way more energy, I guess, depending, arguably, but in general, inference is gonna require less energy than the training side of things. Of course, inference and the, the energy required can continually ramp up based on the utilization of it, the number of people pinging it, the number of output of tokens and whatnot. But there's a whole bunch of cool reasons why this, and. Nothing is saying that this is the next step. What's really cool with Meta is they're continually reinvesting when they kind of don't have to, to an extent. There's no reason why they should be putting so much money into the research and development and they're just putting out there for free. But there are benefits to them as a company support ecosystem, people loving the llama models, which I am one it's open source. I run it on the machine behind me. So they do have benefits. They don't just release this out of the goodness of their heart, but it's really cool. They're, they're just, they're iterating, they're figuring out new things and it'll be really cool to see where large concept models go, if anywhere versus large language models.